What is going on everyone? Welcome to another very exciting episode right here on the MI Gardener channel. In today's episode, we're out in the garden today and we are sweating it out for you. So make sure to throw a like up there if you do enjoy this video because uh, I really, really am sweating it out for you guys today. It's, it's peaking out at 94 degrees today, around 90% humidity. And I thought I'd beat the heat by coming out here and filming at around six o'clock at, at, uh, in the evening. But no matter what I do, I can't keep the sun off my face. It is like a tractor beam that is just scorching the side of my face. And so <laughs> make sure to throw a like up there because I guarantee you by the time I'm done with this shot, I've only been out here for like five minutes and I can already feel the, I can already feel the radiation from the sun giving me a tan like this. And so it's gonna be a wonderful tan line. I can guarantee you that. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, uh, about pale as a peach here and then about red as a lobster here. So it's gonna be a really interesting tan line and uh, definitely a good conversation starter. So again, make sure to throw a like up there because these videos are for you. And I really hope that this one is gonna help you grow big or go home. So what are we talking about today? And uh, also one last thing before we get started is uh, one of the things that I really always recommend is if you're coming out here when it's really hot, stay hydrated, you guys, stay hydrated. A quick PSA, you know, when you're coming out here and you're just doing light work in the garden, you don't, you really don't think, oh, I'm getting dehydrated. I'm, I'm really losing a lot of, of liquids through sweat and through just exhaustion. But I'm telling you, the sun is, uh, the sun is not your friend when it's this hot. And it's very important to get a lot of water. Make sure you're drinking lots of water. I know it's just kind of an, an obvious thing, but I hear it all the time. I hear people say, you know, I got sick because I got, I got, uh, I got uh, over, you know, um, I got overheated, I got dehydrated. And a simple way to do that is to come out in the evening, work the garden in the evening, stay out of the sun during the hot, uh, during the hot part of the sun. If your plants aren't doing well in it, you're probably not gonna do so well either. So just stay in the uh, stay indoors, stay in the shade during the hottest part of the day, and try to come out during you know, the early morning or early afternoon, um, or you know when the sun starts setting in the sky, um, anytime after around five five thirty in the uh, in the evening when the sun is lower in the sky because it's going to be easier for you. And uh, always 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 make sure to bring some water with you because it is very important. So with that PSA out of the way, what are we talking about today? Well, we are going to be talking about how to have better success with direct sown seed during the hot summer sun. And so hot summer weather is, uh, is something that can really plague seed germination. And we have one trick, one little tip that I wanna share with you all that's gonna really increase the success. And for a lot of you, it's gonna be a game changer. Now, when we pull out our, uh, when we pull out our garlic, we pull, it around, we pull it out around early to mid July, usually. And when we pull our, when we pull our crops out, it is right when the hottest part of summer starts hitting. You know, late July, early August, it is just scorching. It's like today, 94 degrees. And we also have our carrots, we have our beets. We have a lot of crops we planted in early spring that we're pulling out of the ground because they're mature and it's time to put more stuff in their place. Because if we leave bare bed space, number one, we're not being as efficient as possible. And number two, we're leaving bed space open for things like weeds to, uh, to colonize our beds but we're also leaving the soil bare, which hurts soil microbes and soil bacteria because they also don't like the hot sun. And so the earth has naturally uh, found a way to constantly cover itself. Soil coverage, but with the form of plants and mulch, it is very important to protecting the soil biome. The soil biome is basically all the, all the beneficial bacteria and fungi and you know, insects and stuff that live within that, it's the, it's the uh, basically the ecology of your soil. And your soil biome relies on having regular coverage. And so it's very important that we grow crops there because not only is it gonna be better for our soil health over time, but it's also better for you because you're growing more food. But one of the downsides to, uh, to trying to start seeds directly in the ground is that they just do not germinate well. And a lot of you have questioned this and said, well, Luke, how come this is? You know, my seeds are fresh. I just got fresh seed. I started some in the spring. They can't have gone bad that fast, but my germination rate is pitiful. How come? And the reason is because super hot sun, super dry weather. Those two things are a recipe for downright pitiful germination rate. And that can be anything from carrots, which is what we're gonna be starting today. Carrots do not like dry, hot weather. They will outright fail. Things like lettuces, you can grow lettuce during the summer, but the seeds themselves germinate pitifully during hot weather. Things like kale, broccoli, uh, cabbage, your, your uh, brassicas, 
right now is when you should be growing those crops for a fall harvest. You gotta get them in the ground now. Things like beets. We'll grow three harvests of beets throughout the growing season, but that middle harvest, the one that we're starting right around this time, they do not like to grow in the really hot sun and the really dry weather. Um, bunching onions, another one. The only crops that really don't mind it you know, pretty much, I'll give you the crops that don't mind it and anything else you should be using this trick for because it's really going to help. These are crops that really like hot weather. Crops like tomatoes, peppers, uh, squashes like zucchinis and cucumbers and, and melons. They don't mind the really hot soil and the, and the drier weather because that's kind of where they thrive. But those crops, you should have already started all of those crops. So therefore, any other crop that you want to be starting right now you should be using this trick for because you're gonna have much better success with your germination. So that trick is with the use of cardboard. So I'm gonna show you real quick, we're gonna pop up here, we're gonna get these seeds germinating and growing. I'm gonna show you just how simple this is. So I've, I've uh, the first thing I've done is I have amended my bed. I put a fresh load of compost on this bed. I've also kind of flipped it over, get a little scratch in. I didn't work it super heavily because I don't believe in really heavily tilling and working your soil. I gave it just a gentle flipping to loosen the soil up a little bit to incorporate that compost. I've added some Trifecta Plus, which is our fertilizer of choice. And then the next thing I've done is I have, uh, I've just raked it flat. So now that all of that is done, it is ready to accept uh, the next part of this process, which is water. It is very important to soak your beds. I cannot stress this enough. Pre-soak before you apply your seeds. Pre-soaking is going to ensure that water is going to seep down through your soil, but it's not going to carry away your seeds, it's not gonna wash away your seeds, because you, it's very important that you flood your soil. When you flood your soil, it's gonna make sure that water gets down nice and deep into the water. We talked about deep watering in another video, go check it out, it's very, very important to know uh, the benefits of deep watering. But deep watering also helps because when you cover the soil, that water is going to wick back up as it dries. And it's gonna keep more consistent soil moisture even though your plants aren't growing yet, even though your seeds are not germinating yet, having that soil moisture is going to ensure that you're never going to dry out. Because one of the biggest reasons why your seeds are not germinating is not because it's so hot. It's because it's so hot plus it's so dry. When you give your seeds water, they start to germinate. And then the problem is the heat aids the evaporation, which makes it dry. And when it dries out, your seeds go dry. And as soon as a seed starts to, uh, starts to actually break dormancy and actually starts to germinate, it needs to have consistent moisture for a prolonged period of time in order for it to form roots. Once it forms roots, then your soil can go dry for a little bit. But until that happens, if your seed breaks dormancy and it goes dry any time before that, your seed will die 100% of the time, 100%. And so, um, yeah, so it's the combination of the heat plus the dry that really uh, does not, um, it, it doesn't make it um, conducive for germination. And also, uh, a lot of you have asked, well, you know, I use a, a heat mat when I'm starting seeds. Why would the heat be bad? Like I said, the heat helps with evaporation, which is bad, but also the heat, when you're talking about uh, bare soil like this, the bare soil can heat up to 100, 105, even 110 degrees, no problem at all. Your heat mat, it typically regulates your soil to be right around 80 to 85 degrees. That is a huge difference. A heat mat warms your soil up if you're starting seeds indoors. Warm soil, good. Hot soil, bad. There's a big difference between 85 and like 110. So we're gonna soak this soil for a very long time. And I'm gonna give this area about three or four times the water that I would normally give it if there were plants growing here. And that's because I want the water to go down nice and deep into the soil column. It's very, very important. I'm just gonna take a stick here, draw some rows. I like to use, I like to use uh, rows of my carrots because it just allows me to kind of have a little more control over where my seeds are going because as we've as we've discovered carrots do not like to be crowded if you crowd your carrots they just don't appreciate it so i'm spacing my rows out about about two and a half inches apart and i'm going to sprinkle some seeds last row here okay so now that i've gotten my beds uh planted out with uh with the seed that i'm planting I'm actually gonna come back and I'm gonna give them another quick watering. And what this is going to do is this is just gonna settle them in place. It's very important that you settle your, 
your, uh, your seeds in place. Obviously, now that we've flooded the beds, you don't need to give them that much water, but this is just gonna help them kind of settle down in the soil. It's gonna help them just kind of nestle into place and make good contact with the soil, which is very, very important to having good seed germination. Now, the very simple part is you're gonna take your cardboard, and I've cut this cardboard to the size of my bed, just like that, and that is all it takes. Now, it's very important we weigh this down. If you don't weigh this down, uh, you're gonna have a hard, uh, you know, a, a hard wind or uh, something like that. It's gonna come and blow this away and move it around, and it's very important that you have good contact with the soil so it stays as close to those seeds as possible. Now, you might be asking yourself, well, Luke, isn't this like sheet mulching? You know, isn't this like cardboard sheet mulching? Yes, it is. And, well, Luke, won't this smother out and kill my seedlings? Yes, it will. The difference here is that we're not leaving this on all the time. Here's the trick. When you, uh, you kind of look at the germination rate on the packet of seeds that you're, that you're growing, and for Scarlet Nance, the days to germination is nine to 12 days. And so if you have nine to 12 days to germination, at right around, you know, I, I like to err on the side of caution, starting at around seven to eight days, I'm gonna come in here, seventh day, I'm gonna come in here, I'm gonna take these off, and I'm gonna lift this up. I'm also gonna make sure throughout the process that I'm coming in here periodically and just checking the soil, making sure that it's nice and damp. If, it's, if it needs a little more water, I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna give it some more water. And that way I'm going to ensure that the soil is staying damp. But I'm also going to ensure that by lifting this up periodically, that as soon as I start to see sprouts, I'm going to pull this off, I'm gonna pull the cardboard off, and I'm gonna leave it off. That way it doesn't smother out the seedlings. Because if you leave the cardboard on, it will kill your seedlings. So check it every single day. And as you get closer, as you get closer to that germination time of you know, nine to 12 days, I'll check it twice a day. Because seeds sprout really quick and you might not catch it in the morning, but they might germinate in the afternoon and you'll catch it at night. And so it's very important so you don't have leggy stressed seedlings or even dead seedlings. So there you go, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new and I really do hope that I don't have a horrible sunburn. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. Hopefully you learned something new. And as always, this is Luke from the MI Gardener channel reminding you to grow big or go home, stay hydrated in the garden. It's very important and we'll catch you all later. See ya, bye. <laughs> Ha <laughs>